The first keynote speaker is Mr. Ibrahim Salim Bandhu. Mr. Salim is a business expert in the Maldives. He commenced his career at the office of the Prime Minister in the year 1967. And from there on, he has had, an, he has had a scintillating career holding prominent posts both in the public and private sector in Maldives. May I please invite you over, sir, to the stage to enlighten us with your views. This morning, I'm delighted that I have to talk to you today about uh, the perspective from today back to 45 years. Many of the gentlemen of senior capacity industry has witnessed this. But how did it happen? Who knows? Where do we started and where are we now? Today, we are proud to contribute one third of the GDP, one third of the tax revenue to the state coffers. Yet, it started with 1,500 room investment 40 years ago. And the selling price was about $20. Imagine transfer price from Malay Airport to this village, this Kurumba with hotel, is one dollar. Is that too much? I don't think so. But that is the price of the time it prevailed. You know. So let us look how the economy worked before. I apologize for the very bad presentation. Maybe that was the time, you know, when things are not high tech. This is a sailing dory which we were fishing, powered by sail, no mechanization. So that was the only income the government was getting. So what were we, this nation was? A nation of 150,000 people. Per capita income was 100 to 125 dollars. But health indicators remained still very good free from malaria, free from tuberculosis, which government embarked on a public health program. Yeah, we will move now. Let's see. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Fishermen always dream. They say, if my boat is in good condition, I will prevail with the sail to the school and I will come back with catch. And that is the determination they have. You can see, but well, I must apologize for this poor condition of the video, you know, but you can make something. That is how it was 45 years ago, perhaps. Well, we have some very interesting infrastructure even then. A national shipping company was operating between Jeddah to Singapore and to Bangkok. 29 ships with 80, 250,000 gross tonnage was available, and we are no exception in bringing our cargo wherever we want, whenever we want. So that was a very great facilitation in this line of we develop the industry. Shipping was contributing about a million dollars to the exchequer on an annual basis. We had an airport compared to the Ali airport or Rai airport. This is what we have. Simple, no immigration. You will be surprised the tourists wanted a stamp on their passport and authority said, no sir, we don't need your passport. That was the leisure fair when it started operating. But now you have to tell forms, you know, good morning sir, where is your hotel? You know, good for you, but maybe 
things are becoming more and more regulated. No banks, only currency notes, cash and carry. The note is very colorful. I wish if the economy also was so colorful, you know. But it was not. Only the traders were happy, cash and carry. And I am supposed that, I suppose that current uh, resource suppliers will be very happy to see cash and carry. They are a great part of great industry today in this country. How did we communicate? There was no telecommunication, only is to from the Maldivian telecommunication department to our embassy in Colombo. It was transmitted by wireless telegraphy. Like the one which was the same thing was used in Titanic too. So it is the technology we have 40 years ago. But it worked. It communicated. Private people have to pay dearly for this wireless telegraphy cost. Only private channel between government and embassy in Colombo. Then comes the study, government asked UNDP to do a study about the tourism. It was published in 1966. And this report concludes, perhaps we do justice to UNDP. Perhaps it may be not most feasible to do study because the country is very hot, no resources. It is not in the island business in the routes of shipping. So the government cannot afford to do this luxury. However, it concluded it would, however, not recommend any investment tourism another five years. So it was not negative, but a diplomatic conclusion to say this is no, in my interpretation. Perhaps diplomacy and business people don't mix together. Yes, this is the man who brought tourism. This is a newspaper cutting from Maldivian newspaper called Moonlight. I think we were very romantic people, so the newspaper is also Moonlight. And we used to walk also very Moonlight way, you know, so that everything is written in Divehi about this Mr. George Corbin, he came to Maldives, you know. And this is it, you know, about how he has come to Maldives in the newspaper. His name is Mr. George Corbin and this Francesco Bernini if my Italian is correct, you know. And they came just on a ship to see how, what we can do as they are operating to agency. Yes, they started working with the government about this tourism industry. And when the pioneers with Maldivians, you know, I think Mr. Maniku is here, they went to the government for asking permission. Government said, what is tourism? You start, let us wait and see what happens. Then we will see. You start. start. So government gave every permission. Encourage everything. Minimum regulation. And that is how it started. This is the photo of Kurba village when it was uh, originally started. They came, Italians came, you know, on the test ground. They stayed in Mali guest houses. During the night, they sleep there. During the day, they come to excursion to Hura, Mali at all, Himma fish, and they go fishing. You know. See the number of fish they have caught. Today, you will cry if you see this. You know. But that is part of how it started. You know. How much will you pay for this hotel? I think this is fantastic. Yeah, and it worked. It is the beginning. A diving hotel in Maldives called the Baros. Am I right, Mr. Maniko? Kuramati, yes, sorry, excuse me. Yes, Mr. Afif, you are there, the guide, you know. So this is a diving resort, fantastic property, you know. Today also you can get a very good price, like $200 perhaps, Afif. Do you think so? <laughs> they paid $15 per night for this property and diving. Thank you, Mr. Maniku Afi, for correcting.
This is a marketing leaflet done by Christian Tourist Agency of Kurumba, Bandos, Vihamana Fushi, Baros, Furana Fushi, and the price is $23 on an average, double full board. Double full board. Winter $74.75. And the transfer price is $1 one way. You will be surprised, you know, how effective it worked. And it all worked. However, the air travel, when we start the industry, was not very, very, very known. So government have to charter, the industry has to charter Sri Lankan Air Force. Mind you, it is Sri Lankan Air Force, not Ceylon. So they were bringing passengers on charter from Colombo to Mali and back. And it was an uphill battle for the pioneers, you know, to argue with them because they took each way one night away stopover in Colombo. So technically, if they come for seven days, we received only five nights income. Two nights income returned in Colombo because of their protective policies. You know. To overcome, government started a joint venture with Indian airlines called the Maldives International Airlines. This advertisement says, Flight to Sri Lanka and then connect the rest of the world three times a week, a B-747 aircraft, which was a joint venture. Mind you, it made money. After two years, it transferred about $250,000 to the Treasury. What tells more? That is the beginning, how the government intervened and helped industry to grow. Now, this is still, this country exists, you know, in a different name, but they bought a Convey a 440 aircraft, which was phasing out by the American Airlines. This was bought by the government, two aircrafts, one for operation between Colombo, and then Sri Lankan Air Force also bought two. Showing the scene that Maldives also has bought two aircraft, we also must buy. And that is how it started. And fortunately, the spare engines also were available, and it served, you know, to overcome Sri Lankan Airlines difficulties and we can ferry both at that time. Government has done a lot of investments meanwhile, you know, planning how can we grow. Satellite Earth Station were invested with about two million dollars. 1977, so we are slowly progressing, getting into the world, you know. You can make a telephone call, you can send a telex, you can send fax smiley, you know, with this new invention of telecommunication department. And government had a management contract with Dirag, knowing that we don't have technical people, which is now successor is uh, Dirag. And then big story. The question of air transport was crucial for the industry. And government decided enough is enough, we will invest. So Malia International Airport was designed and it was tendered and Government has very good assistance from Middle East funds like Kuwait Fund for Arab Development, Saudi Fund, OPEC Fund. Total investment was $22 million at the rate of 0.75%. Five years of grace and 20 years repayment. Almost free. Almost free. So this was a very great achievement the government has done in investing infrastructure, telecommunication, airport. And I think that's the commitment government has got towards this industry. 31st October 1981, Kondo aircrafts from Germany started landing in Mali first time. This is the first time the European tour operator has started directly to Maldives. Previous, they were coming through Colombo. So depending on Colombo was a big issue for our tour operators because Unnecessary two nights has to be given to them for transit. They do not allow to transfer on the tarmac or through transit, you know. So this is a very historical photograph. So today we are talking about an industry which is how much? 4.6848 million GDP, of which one third this industry is contributing. One third is a big amount. How did we start? 
gradually, you know, government encouraged minimum regulation, laissez faire. From 1972 to 1979, no duty whatsoever the government. The doors were open. Go ahead, invest, work, no tax also. So it was very nice. You know. Industry grew. Yes, sir. Yes, I would agree, yes or no. Yes, because you are arguing, because the sector of the construction is taken from tourism and transport into construction industry. Therefore, the classification of the GDP is somewhat, you are right, but the classification of the UN system is always in that fashion, I must say. You know. Agree. Because the success of a growth was there was no foreign exchange restriction in this country. Whoever who brings from business, from the beginning, it was there, liberal system. Even now, today, even we don't have exchange, foreign exchange, even our neighbors are having. So there was growth. People brought money from abroad, people invested, and it grew. And per capita income is about $4,000 after 45 years. Revenue to the government is about one third or 31 million per annum, you know. As the tax base goes expanding, our contribution, tourism contribution also slowly declining, you know. But it is also a function of occupancy. The more you occupy, you may have taxes also, TGST and corporate tax and so on. From 1981, we have fantastic growth in this country, you know. Some is Emirates Airlines started coming, Singapore Airlines started coming, and domestic aviation also, we had aviation. By the time, Ariatol was in operation, Bahatol was in operation. So, Hummingbird Helicopter Company was operating in 1991. We have some pioneers here. Seagull helicopters, whatsoever, may we fly by night, you know. It comes and goes. And Maldivian air taxi started 1993, you know. And that first year, they carried 420 passengers. And Sun Express, there was another airline called Sun Express. It is also a helicopter company, which after some time, we don't know. Who holds the license, why it was cancelled, we don't know. Then we have a Trans Maldivian in 2002. So as we dripped, you know, the Maldivian two operators found that Upgrading of the resorts are essential, perhaps against the will of two operators. Because they would like to keep Maldives perhaps at a reasonably affordable level to European chart market. But upgrading of Kurumba in 96 was a big change in the industry. And prior to that, I think the water bungalows was introduced in 19, which was also very interesting. You know. So all this happened over a period of time. So what is the operation today? Capacity is increasing, occupancy also is increasing. So what is the ADR? Naturally, some dilation is coming in. And I think good news is not good news for the future too. Maybe it is going to be dilated. We have to be very careful. You and I cannot do anything perhaps. Growth has been dramatic, you know. From 1978, we had been growing constantly about 5-6% on an annual basis. And occupancy remained from low of 6%, it has gone to about 80% occupancy. You know. That is, I think, very good still. However, the length of stay is declining. We are moving from a basic charter market to more Brands which is upgraded, which is also selling high prices, which is means high revenue to the government and to the entrepreneurs also. So it is now 5%, 0 0.5 declining from 10 days to approximately 6 days now, over a period of time. Selected leading markets also declining. Basic markets you know, who, who are fundamentally you know, 
German, English, you know, there is no growth. It is stabilizing. Slowly, there is some growth in the British market. However, there is one market that's going up, an unusual freak is there, the Chinese market. But the Austrian market, German market, Italian market, British market, somewhat declining and somewhat stable, I must say, you know. I think as we grow, these things are likely to happen. Structure of the markets are shifting from European to Asia. Perhaps which is not captured here is the Asian market like place like South Korea, which is very important, is also having a growth. But let's compare some numbers between Seychelles and Maldives. I think we are not the only country who is running tourism. So what does it say? Revenue per available room, Revpa, Maldives still seems to be very good. Maybe Mr. Maniku, Mr. Afif might agree, but on an avenue, this is sources from JLL, you know. And occupancy remains still very good, you know, 75, all these countries we are. I think we have a comparative advantage from Chinese market in terms of flying hours, 8.10 hours, against 11.4 from Mauritius, 13.10 to Seychelles. So this is a cost of flight, you know, which affects our hotel price. So all in all, I would think we have been very successful. How? Minimum regulation, foreign exchange income, incentives to grow. And what are the new technologies this industry has brought? Desalination plant, sewage treatment plant, incineration. Yet, I think a lot of agenda is unfinished, like any business. What is this unfinished business? Development finance, Maldivian parts and industry to be increased, management of solid waste, not only resource, but entire country now is in a very serious situation. Serious situation because there is so much of plastic bottles and plastic garbage floating in the sea. Industry alone cannot stop this. Solid waste, high cost of domestic air service. It is always. Do we have a bankruptcy law? No, sir. Not at this moment. So I think all this needs investment. With this, I think all of you and us have a better future if we work hard towards our goal. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. If you have any questions, you know, maybe I can answer. Yes, Mr. Maniku, sir, you have the floor. We don't know what will happen in the future, but all I can say is that, you know, the equation has changed. What the what was happening in the last five years or two years back is not the same now. It's, it's totally different story. And because there is so many products in the country and then we don't have, you know, to be honestly from a local entrepreneur, I can say that we don't have cheap funds here for us to play around. We don't have. These are all big bottlenecks if you want such sustain. And in future, I think Maldives, there will be three market segments in the hotel. One is the very, very, very top end, and then the, below that, and then there will be players like uh, many local players and international players also will have a, you know, medium-sized price which will be more affordable to the, to the common man, and uh, a lot of hotels with for family-friendly uh, hotels will come up, and then at bottom line also there will be a place. So this place will have a bed for everyone. So it has completely changed and we have got competition from now, from many, many quarters. Lot of people who are not in the tourism industry now are focusing on tourism industry. So there will be economic competition for this. The Chinese market has come at the same time, we also know it can drop you also. So these are all, you know, lessons for us to learn. And if we, if we, you know, guide ourselves and be wiseful and think of a 
to go through this. I can tell you as a person who has been here for so many years. But the future, I can say, will not be just like the good old days. 2014 was our best year, I think so. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Maniko. I think we all agree with you. We all agree with you because the European trouble market still remains very high and it will be in order to maintain our competitive advantage. Chinese market yields are not so good, numbers are good. So many products are coming, guest houses are coming in. That is also perhaps part of the industry today. So naturally, the industry will have a dilution in product, but these three segments will work in its own way. Thank you, we agree with you. Any other question? So I see. So with this, I thank you very much for your active participation and how delighted I was to give a small snapshot of Maldives. And I think the time is just right for me to say goodbye for the time being. Good morning.